Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week. Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of Classic Restos. Of course, not possible without the continued support from Shannon's Insurance and Penrite Oil. And how good is Shannon's Insurance? You can insure your classic bike, your classic car, your classic truck, your home and your contents, all with Shannon's as well. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote on 134646. There's also an exclusive opportunity for you to sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club. See more when you visit shannons.com.au and the Shannon's Club truly is your garage. When it comes time for the finest in oils, coolants and fuel additives, you cannot go past Penrite. They've been established since 1926. Australian made, Australian owned, they have stood the test of time. This particular car here, 1959 Cadillac, hosting the legendary 390 V8. Can it take Penrite? You bet it can. And this particular one takes a lot. The Penrite Technical Assistance Team is also there to help us seven days a week. Find out more when you visit Penrite online at penriteoil.com.au. AU. Oil right, use Penrite, simply a better class of oil. And on today's show, I have driven down the south coast of New South Wales, Australia, to the beautiful region of Sussex Inlet, because there's a small but very important vehicle event. A few years ago, a handful of senior guys started the Men's Shed. And no matter what country town that you go into around Australia, chances are that you'll find one. But before we go any further on today's show, here's a little bit of information as to what the Men's Shed does. The Men's Shed. If you look it up in the dictionary, it will tell you that it's a place where senior guys can get together and get away from some of their life's problems or simply to enjoy a chat. The Men's Shed was started in regional Australia around seven years ago. It originated from the hardship of working the land, where depression was, and still is, so high amongst many. The Men's Shed was created for guys with worries or seeking a mate as company, to put the jug on, have a break, talk to others and get away from the missus. And that gives the missus a break as well. The Men's Shed here in Sussex Inlet has around 85 members. They congregate three times per week, and in this case it's Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. It helps keep their minds active and of course builds some camaraderie amongst other like-minded locals. And so today the good old boys are putting on the Sussex Men's Shed Monster Car and Bike Show. Well, well, another car show. This one is just two years established. Last year, around 80 classics comprising bikes and cars came along to this gorgeous part of the state's south coast. All money raised helps to support the men's shed, and that is priceless as to how that helps some of these guys. Here we go, time for John Groves, one of the members here of the men's club at Sussex Inlet. How are you, John? Good, mate. Very well. Thank God. We've got a nice day. It was um, a little bit suspicious last night with the rain, but uh, everything comes out good we today. Can control a lot of things, but we have no control over the weather, mate. Congratulations on the second year here now. Second year, yes, yeah. correct, yes. Uh, now, look, last year was pretty good. We're expecting more cars this year. Um, just quickly, there's a little bit to talk about. The car behind us is, is your car, right? The red one, 69 Mustang, yes. How yeah. yeah. long have you had that? I bought that as a retirement present to myself yeah. 15 years ago. What a gift. Yeah, to myself. Took a whack out of my super, but who cares? I tell you what, you're in front buying it 15 years ago. I'd rather buy it then than now. Yep, correct. Yes, <laughs> yes. Good on you, John. Helps to keep you young. Oh, well, keeps me off the streets yeah. and broke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, speaking of which, now, the importance of this men's shed. Elaborate. Tell us all about it. Men's sheds really began approximately, I don't know, between 10 and 15 years ago. And it was to do with uh, the bushies in the, in the outback Australia. They were going through a lot of problems with men's depression. There were suicides from farmers. Uh, and so a group of guys got together one, one time and then they decided we have to go somewhere for men to go. 
So they came up with a concept of saying, well, why don't we have some men's sheds mm. where men can go, they can talk, have a cup of coffee, yeah. do a little bit of work, yep. do whatever, but yep. it's mainly a meeting place for men to go yep. and just talk with men. It's a place to go and vent. And invent. Yep. Um, a lot of guys that get their lives back on track, yep. they're just sitting at home doing nothing. Yep. And now, with our men's shed up here at Sussex, they have somewhere to go. Mm. We have a good, good mob of guys. Uh, they're all happy working here, happy little chappies. It's one of the best things that has happened. Now, John, there's different walks of life in the men's shed. You've got different trades, guys. Now, what are the sort of things that you build and make? Correct, Fletch. Um, everybody's re all the guys are retired, obviously, in the men's shed. And we do fundraising during the year for Christmas, for Easter. And we make special wooden toys uh, to go with those events. We make baby cradles, we make chairs, we make tables. We have carpenters there, we have electricians, we have painters, we have um, welders, we have engravers, we have business people. We have a whole range of guys, Fletch, that now they have somewhere to go and pool their talents yep. and create things if they want to yep. or just come up, have a cup of coffee. Yep. Have a talk. I, I just think it's tremendous. Uh, you know, it, it, like you said, it, it keeps the minds uh, active of the, of the senior members as well. Uh, and, yeah, to vent anything on their minds rather than going downhill at home. Uh, it gives them a break from the missus as well. Well, I won't go into that one, but yes. It's but then again, the missus, the missus gets a break too, so it, it definitely is a win-win. You're not wrong there, Fletch. No. <laughs> yep. Now, John, uh, website. Drop that for us. Now, it goes uh, town by town, but this particular one here. We have our own website. Uh, the name... It's Sussex Inlet Men's Shed, uh, .com .au. Uh, Our web page is there and you can read and see things that we do on it. Good on you. So it's tremendous. And look, apparently, apart from the government grant for the building that they supply for you guys, you're on your own after that. So these guys have still got the, the rates, their power bills, all expenses, and a uh, little, right. little car show like this, well, that's just how they get by. Mate, my hat comes off to you. Well yeah. done. Good on you, mate. Just so good to see in the regional areas for uh, for you guys. Good oh, on you, John. That's awesome, Fletch. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you, Fletch. You're welcome. Don't forget to pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote on 134646 and sign up and become a member of the Shannon's Club where it truly is your garage. Find out more when you visit shannons.com.au. And Penrod Oil, been around since 1926, Australian made, Australian owned and their technical assistance team is also there to help us seven days a week. See more at penrodoil.com.au. You're watching the Sussex Inlet Men's Shed Classic Car Show for 2015. You're seeing it first on Classic Restos, back with more after this. Moving through, uh, first cup off the rank here today, 1965 Hillman Imp. Barry, how are you? Well, thanks, Flesh. Tell you what, mate, I love that hat. Oh, it's a beauty in it. I mean, it, actually, it was a hat from a hardware shop, but I covered their logo over, bugger them. They don't give me anything. They don't support me. Well, that's it, you know. You're going to get on the bus, mate. You've got to pay the fare, haven't you? Got to put the real stickers on the front of your hat. That's what you've got to do. Exactly right. Uh, now, Barry, 1965 Hillman Imp, you've done a beautiful job on this car. I mean, must be. Was it painstaking? Oh, well, Fletcher's like most things you find. You think, that's not it. That's a pretty good old thing. I'll take that one home when you get it home. It's n they're never what you think they are. Uh, actually had to put a new front on it, just behind the front wheels, off another car. Welded that on, and uh, the motor was completely worn out. And... Uh, yeah, it's just a whole complete restoration, I suppose. You think they're not, but they always are, yeah, yeah. to get it right. But the thing is with your work, Barry, uh, no stone left unturned. I mean, you do immaculate work. It's just beautiful. Oh, well, thanks, Fletch. The interior as well, based on original? Uh, it's pretty much original. It's got the original pattern. Um, I've got the upholstery to make the seats in the squabs a little bit thicker to get a bit more, a bit more support there. But apart from that, uh, different colour, but in the same style. And I got a little bit of piping around the end of edge of it to sort of match the outside of the car. You gotta put that bit of piping around, you know? A bit of pipe. That makes all the difference. Now we're talking 1965, four-cylinder car. She's a little neck snapper of a unit. Now what size is the engine up front, Barry? Uh, well that's actually in the back. It's uh, 
Yeah, 875 cc's. I knew that. I just wanted to, you know, keep him on his toes. <laughs> now, 875, now, around about like same year on par with the 850 Mini. Well, that's pretty much the Mini, I think, the 850, the little one with the sliding windows, I think it was 1960 or 59. Mm. And these were late 70, late 62 or three, early 63. And they were sort of in the same class. Uh, almost the same weight, the same performance. This might have been a couple of pound deer maybe because yeah. it's from Scotland, so you've got to pay for quality, haven't you? Yeah. Is it true that they wanted to call it an Imperial but they just couldn't afford the extra letters for the badge back in the day? Oh, they could be right. I'd never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting stuff. Barry, great to have you back on Classic Restos. You was on a few years ago. Um, it's good to see you again, mate. Hey, Barry, it's a good thing we have got these hats on, mate. I mean, this is this, this sun, it's killer here today. Yeah, mate, these cars from Scotland, they probably wouldn't be used to that, but you get out here in Australia, you've got to take what you're given, haven't you? Absolutely. Thanks for bringing the cars along, mate. Well done. Thank you. Good on you, Fletch. All right, moving through. Time for a truck on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Hello, Wayne. How are you? How you going, Fletch? All right? Yeah, I like, I like that out of yours. Yeah, it's can, can I buy one of those? Isn't it a beauty? I like that. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Shannon's too? Yeah. Jeez, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, and the other one? And the other one? Oh, yeah. Penrite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I use. <laughs> <laughs> so, say no more. That's for, it. For more major sponsor contact information go to classicrestos.com.au very timely how are you wayne good mate good yourself good mate good uh the color of the truck it just pops it really stands out in the paddock mate uh f100 yeah. what's the year model 1956 Jeez. what's the story on this and uh, well it's, it's actually the color of it is actually a new york taxi cab yellow and when, when i soon i thought this and them, them things seem to glow in the dark them things so oh, you'd be able to charge people to ride in it exactly and i get a lot of comments on the on the color yeah, and that would. but we we found the we've got the truck on the uh, back of uh, uh, canberra there a place called captain's flat yep and um it only had eighty thousand miles from new yeah, and um but it was a bigger truck and that it was a, a 500 series yeah. and that's so what uh, t tell us what was the feeling what was it like the day that you went to get the truck well, my mate said, if you don't buy it, I will. Mm. And that's so how I said, well, okay, I've got to do something about this. Yeah. And that's so we went back, got some batteries and put her in and fired her up and yeah. backed her out and drove it home with the heater on and the radio on. Oh. And that's so how cool is that? Cool, and that, and, I, I get, and the guy I got actually got it off a good mate of mine. Mm. And that um, said, if I bring this thing home, my missus will leave me. <laughs> but that's how so she said, you better go and get it and have some fun with it. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. And that, but it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. And that, it's, it's basically standard. And that it's got power steering and power brakes. Mm. Engine and driveline, Wayne, uh, which way have you gone there? A stock, that's a 292 Ford, and that's got the original truck four speed in it, and a um, star model Ford rear end in it. Coolest kid on the block with his truck. What was your build time? <laughs> or probably about, probably just over two years, yeah. and that, yeah. by the time I, get, time I went through the painters, mm. and then got it all sorted out and yeah. squared up and things yeah. like that, and they kept chasing me out the workshop. Yeah. Saying, get away, get away, you know, that you come with a text colour again, we're going to paint you with it. Mate, I love the interior, I love the steering wheel. There's just something about the, the setting of that wheel encapsulated with that dashboard, the interior representing the year. Yep. It's just so cool. It is. It, it's, I actually used that wheel and that thing. It's out of an old 57 Ford Coupe I had many, many years ago. And the only parts I kept and sort of pay homage to it, that's me steering wheel off my old car that and that and, me, and the steering column. So I fitted the whole lot in. You're going to keep this truck forever, Wayne? I'd say so. I'd like yeah. to, and that, and that we actually got another one in the line, a, a full-size truck for the truck shows. And it's a bogey drive one, and we're we're doing that as we speak. So they, they become a part of you, don't they? They do. They do, and that, I, I love the things. I've been, all, I've been to the US with them, and that, and that. And that's why I got a lot. I took heaps of photos, and I thought yeah. this is how I got to do it. It's a different world over there, isn't it? Ah, oh, and what? <laughs> I wish there was a I wish there was a highway between you and there. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a be a hell of a drive, wouldn't it? You'd have to do a couple of oil change, a couple of services to get there. It'd be worth it, though. And speaking of which, if you want to go to the USA, eh, Fletch Tour, just go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours link for more information. You should go, Wayne, I reckon. I think we should we'd make a good pair. Mm, and then we'd, we'd, we'd do, I'll, hold the, I'll hold the microphone, you can do all the talk. <laughs> a couple of partners in crime. That's it, do I? Thanks, buddy. All the best, Fletch. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. If you have a hankering for American iron, some of the finest auto museums, private car collections, and some of the biggest events on the planet, you may be considering a Fletch tour to the United States of America. Have a look at this. You deserve a Fletch tour. See the amazing Ford, GM and Chrysler Nationals at Carlisle events along with museums and private collections in beautiful Pennsylvania, USA. Then it's the Motown city of Detroit and its region taking in more die-hard stuff with incredible history. Rounding off with the Woodward Dream Cruise, the largest moving car cruise in the world. One of the best things about a Fletch tour is you're really looked after. It's something I've always wanted to do. 
Very well organised. Um, the tour company that put it together was great. Go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours icon for more information. Hope you're enjoying today's show. Back with more after this. Moving through the heat as we do, we have Vic. Hello, Vic. Hello, Fletch. Love your hat, mate. Thank you very much. It's getting a lot of comments on today's show. That's good. That's good. You, you need that on a day like this. Absolutely. Although there's that many holes in it. It's like a piece of Swiss cheese, but anyway. <laughs> Let the air in, mate. That's the one. Vic, you've got a beautiful 1928 Roadster here, mate. It's sensational. Thanks, mate. What's it like to drive? So Beautiful. Fast. Yes, very fast. So, uh, what so do you got under the hood? Uh, 302 Windsor. Ah. Uh, four barrel Holly. Yep. Yeah. 750. Yep. And lumpy cam, that's all. There you go. Eh? There you go. Bit of old school in the 28 Roadster. What a cool looking thing. And not only that, the uh, paint job on this car is incredible. Tell us about the paint work on this, Vic. Well, the paint works on this is about 15 years old. You just got to keep it polished. If you let it go, you can pay for a new respray job. Mate, I tell you what, you've been working. I mean, he's been hard at it. I mean, you've you've done your lower control arms and your front suspension housing and everything. Everything's done on it. Underneath is just like the top, polished. That's good. You've got a lot of time on your hands, don't you, Vic? Well, when you retire, you've got time. <laughs> You, you're retired? Yes, I am. Mean, I... He looks too young to be a retired bloke. But you know what? It's a credit to you because it does take a lot of time. Vic, tell me, do you know anything about the history of this roadster before you got it? Oh, no, no, no. So put the mail. All I know the is built, the built the car floor. for his wife. Yep. Then she didn't want to drive it anymore. So right. I went to a show. I sent it for sale yep. and I bought it. Now, good on you, Vic. It's good to see a, a retired fellow like yourself out in a 1928 Roadster. Have a look at it. You've got to agree. It's a beautiful job, mate. Congratulations. Well done. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. Now, before I let you go, you have won something here today, I believe. Yes, I got first prize. There you go. For the best car at the show. All the polishing under the sun, it's paid off. It's paid off. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. A lot of hard work, Reg, but... Well, you know, it'll give you something to polish for next year. That's right. And there's other shows between next year too. Absolutely. Hope I see you around, Vic. Fletch, you will. Thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thanks. Time now for Orman. How are you, Orman? Not too bad, Fletch. Pretty good, mate. That's yeah. Okay. What, are you a farmer or something? I like your hat or a oh, big hat. Geez, I tell you what, it's been the star attraction of today's episode, hasn't it? The old hat. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Keep, the, keep the sun out of your eyes. Well, it's been pretty warm, mate. How have you been? Oh, hang on. You've been in the tent in the back there, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I've been holding, mate. Yeah, oh, that's the way. Now, you've been good enough to bring a sensational car, a rare car, an Austin Cooper from 1964. Now, Orman, I've got to ask you the affiliation between Austin and Cooper. How, how does that, uh, and Morris, how does that work in? Well, the, um, the Co uh, Cooper, Mr. Cooper, brought out the, uh, invented the uh, Morris Cooper S's, and I'm not real sure, but I think they bought out the franchise of the Austin Cooper, and they took. Bought, they got those and uh, anyway, there wasn't many of them made anyway, they bought a f imported a few out to Australia and I was lucky I was able to get one of them and later, in the, later on in life, you know. Okay, so obviously not many in the country, uh, have you heard what number, maybe rumoured as to how many are here? You could say two or three, I'd say, yeah. Okay, we look inside this car, uh, the interior is very well done too. Um, a question earlier in today's show went along the lines of close to standard. Same deal here with this yeah, one? Standard it is, yeah, except for the racing seat in there. The upholstery is all standard and everything like that, you know. It's still kept to, to the same, as off, come off the production line, you know. Engine-wise, what's happening here? Well, that's a 13cc motor with a Weber on, a full house motor in it, you know. Yeah. And it's got a um, uh, competition uh, suspension. And the wheels wide and the roll bar and a whole lot, you know. Be like a go kart. Very much like a go kart if you want to be that way, but I'm not, I don't drive like I used to, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But still in you though. Oh, yeah, you've got great fun, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you get down here with most blokes with the other cars and looking around at them and that and talking cars and that. Yeah, it's a good thrill. Isn't it a great hobby? Oh, it's a great hobby, all right. You'll like have the pigeons too, I race those, but. The pigeons couldn't take me for a drive, so I was looking for another hobby when I retired, and I was looking for the car, and I got the car I was after, you know. When you let the pigeons out, who gets home first, the pigeons or the mini? <laughs> the pigeons always get home first, so hungry. <laughs> All right, I mean, great having you on today's show, yeah. mate. Um, love your little mini. Well done. Yeah, good. Thanks very, very much, Fletch. No yeah, mate. Good. Thanks very much, mate. And when it comes to automobiles that are as big as this event itself, 
nothing really surpasses a 59 Cadillac. How are you, Judith? I'm well, Fletch, and you? Good, thank you. Thanks for bringing the caddy along. Oh, that's fine. My <laughs> pleasure. How does it feel driving this beautiful big car around? It floats. <laughs> <laughs> it really floats yeah. on the road. These were the cars that were designed just to go from A to B in a straight line, That's weren't they? That's right. You're supposed yes. to leave New York City and drive directly to LA across the United States of America. Yep. Don't go around any corners or in any bends. Stay straight and you'll be good. That's right. Yeah, it's a bit scary for the passenger. <laughs> Talk about a lounge room car. I mean, did they ever get more bizarre than a 59. I mean, the amount of chrome detail around the grill with the bullet insets there, the fins out the back, just the elegance of the the tail lights, everything was just incredible with these cars, weren't they? It, was. it definitely was, yes. Now, how long have you had it? We've had it about five years. What inspired you to buy the 59? Uh, well, my husband and son went to uh, the States uh, to go to a Meekum auction. And they decided they wanted a caddy because we've got two boys and we've got an A model Ford to go to one of them and they needed a car to go to the other one yep. as a legacy. How cool is that? <laughs> I mean, don't muck around, get the 59 Caddy. So we went and got a Caddy, wow. yeah. It's good to see it's left-hand drive too. Yes, yes. It was, um, they found it in Phoenix, Arizona, yep. stored in a climate-controlled room. Yeah. It's got 50,000 originals miles mm. on it when he bought it, mm. and the guy who had it really looked after it. They do this, um, not just in the United States of America, but uh, these uh, climate-controlled rooms uh, just eliminates the rust, keeps the body dry, dehumidifies the air. I mean, I don't know, maybe the people are sitting, you know, in their homes, you know, sweating like crazy, but as long, right. as, the, as long as the cars the are cool. Okay. That's yeah, right. That's Keep the caddy cool. Now, over the five years, Judith, uh, been a reliable car. Have you had to do anything to it? We've done nothing to it. Mm. We've done a few road, uh, short road trips, been to Canberra, it's been up the central coast, um, Sydney, don't want to put too many kilometres on it, well, <laughs> or miles. Know, I guess that if the old girl's in retirement and you're enjoying it. They were such a heavy-duty thing, though. I mean, we look around the front near the radiator support panel there where the horns are, and that square section there was the second battery option that you could have got with these Cadillacs back in their day as well. Now, with the 390 up front, when you put the right foot down, does it still go it along does. nicely? Yes, it does. It purrs along there. Now, Judith, through the eyes of a lady, this car, how is it looked upon? Is it like a big piece of jewellery with you? Oh, yeah, it's a, a big rock. <laughs> yeah, but at least with this one you can get in and have some fun with it. You can, yeah, you idea. can. You don't just put it away in the drawer. Well, thank you very much, uh, Judith, for bringing the car here today. Have you travelled far? No, no, uh, just a few k's. That's good. Yeah. Local lady, 59 Caddy, great to see you here. Thank you very much, Judith. Thank you very much, Fletch. <laughs> How good was today's episode representing the men's shed? A group of senior gentlemen getting together and supporting the hobby that we all love so much, and that is our classic vehicles. In the meantime, classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD box sets of the show. Classic Restos merchandise, contact information on joining us on a Fletch tour, and the major sponsors as well. As I say at the end of every show, no matter where you're watching from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week.